Hello everybody, welcome back to the Forever Bedrock Realm, and welcome to my life for the past two hours. So, you guys might be wondering what I'm currently doing here in our villager trading hall. Well, I am smelting cobblestone, which I had from my base, and I also brought a ton of smooth stone over here, because I am working on getting enough smooth quartz to go ahead and finish, or at least make a giant dent, in the hyperloop. So, I've basically just been sitting here, smelting cobblestone, and just grabbing the XP, and then when I get enough, I run over here to our stonemasons, which we have quite a few of them. And actually, most of them do smell, do sell quartz. Now, for those of you that don't know, you can actually smelt quartz and make it into smooth quartz. And it looks slightly different than regular quartz. It's like the corners aren't as harsh, I guess is the easiest way to say it. So, I mean, I didn't know that, but that's what we're using in the tunnels. So... Right now, I'm just looking for the cheapest villager to trade stone with, and of course, they're all incredibly expensive, but we do have ones that are 10, and that's the one I wanted, because I can just go ahead and do that, and then turn right back around and buy quartz off them. And the good thing is, I think because I'm buying stuff off of them, they actually are not, like, jumping their prices up. Now, when they reset their trades later on in the day... They do uh, bump their prices up, but it, uh, so far hasn't been an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to keep on doing this until I run out of stone, which I actually don't think I have that much more left. No, I only have four stacks plus what I have smelting. But we're going to go ahead and smelt this and, of course, smelt the quartz. And we'll see just how far we get in the Hyperloop. Well, guys, after another hour of smelting, we have ourselves 14 stacks of smooth quartz stairs. Now, for those of you paying attention at home, you're probably wondering, why was I smelting cobblestone when I always carry a silk touch pick? Well, when we're doing that big dig over the base, you know, sometimes my pick runs out and I just happen to grab the first one. And I actually have space for cobblestone in my storage system. We just never use it because, I mean, how often do I really make furnaces or pistons? Now, this episode, of course... We're going to be making a ton of pistons because as soon as I finish laying down all of this quartz stairs, I'm going to head back to the base and we're actually going to start the first wall of our massive farming district. And I'm actually going to put in a sugarcane farm. So we're going to go ahead and get this done, see how far we got. So we are at block 273. Now let's see how far 14 stacks gets us. Well guys, if we take a look at our completion here, we can go ahead and see that we are well into the 400s now on our Hyperloop Tunnel. And yeah, it's a little bit uneven because, you know, I kind of just continued down there. But let's just say, for the heck of it, that we ended at 476. So, 14 stacks took us exactly 200 blocks, give or take, right? So we go from 476, and then if we fly down to the end of the tunnel, which is right here. So 476 to, let's just say 776. So we have 300 blocks left. So we're getting there, guys. You figure we covered two-fifths of the tunnel. So we basically did 40% of the tunnel. So next person who comes on in here, they can just go ahead and slap some more quartz on here. And basically another five or ten minutes, this will basically be done. So it's not too bad of a deal. But guys, we're going to go ahead and head back to our base right now, and we are actually going to, like I said, start our farming district. But before I do that, I actually want to go ahead and, like I said, place two more boxes of red sand. So we're going to go ahead, expand Mars a little bit more, and we'll see exactly how far we get. So I guess the question is, what area do we want to work on? Do we want to try and finish up this corner? Do we want to start out this section out here? Or do we want to start over here? Now, this section over here is kind of tough because, I mean, I don't know how well you can tell on the map, but it's, like, hilly and you gotta, like, jump a lot. Over here is kind of flat for the most part. So, I think we're just gonna work in here and see how far these two shulker boxes get us. It shouldn't take us too, too long because, like I said, this is flat. And the flatter it is, the easier it is. And then, uh, we can also, I think we have to go ahead and get rid of some trees here. I'm not 100% sure, but I think those trees are still on the map. So we'll go ahead and take care of those too, just so, you know, we can't see them anymore because who needs nature? Well guys, I went ahead and I removed those trees down in the corner as you saw. And actually that's quite possibly the hardest part of doing this build is waiting for the tree leaves to despawn because they are not fast at all. But we did decide on doing the front section, like I said. And I mean, we're making a pretty big dent. You can kind of see like that, you know, Utah looking section. 
So basically everything from here over we did so far and it hasn't been bad. I mean placing this much sand it's not a bad thing. It's actually kind of nice. I don't know if any of you guys have ever done, you know, large scale projects like this that are kind of have like repetitive bits. But I mean, you guys know we've been placing sand now for, well, frankly, months. And I mean, it's, it's kind of nice. You know, I don't really have to worry about too much. Now, right now I am the only one on. So I do have to like worry about sleeping and mobs and primarily I have to worry about Endermen. And that's just because they like to pick up the sand. So you know, I usually have to go around and kind of like patch up all the areas that Enderman took, but you know, this isn't a, too bad of a job. It's actually quite relaxing. Maybe, you know, if you guys ever build a world, you can try this and just, you know, you kind of zone out for a bit and just do your thing. But the cool thing is, and I was kind of realized this earlier, is that if you look straight down from the ship, this will be like the section you see. So I think it'll be pretty cool to kind of like finish like this section up through here and just make it even with that. Not really worry about how much sand we use. So we have, I don't know, about five and a half stacks left. And of course I have like a little bit left in the shulker. I think I have like five more stacks left. And we're watching a sheep die to a baby wolf and the sheep is dead. But I have like five more stacks left and then of course a whole nother shulker box. Plus I got a spare few sets that are kind of just like hanging out in me and Dski's secret drop-off location area that nobody knows about. So I'm gonna actually put those in too. So let me just go ahead and buckle down. No time lapse this time, and we'll just go ahead and see how far we get. Well guys, I did it again. I kind of got a wee bit overzealous with the sand. So what we ended up doing was of course, it was even with this line here. So I added a little bit here, and then we basically did all of this here. So this was actually three shulker boxes plus four stacks. And the reason that we did three shulker boxes instead of two is because I already had two loaded. And then I remembered this automatically loads shulker boxes for me. So I don't have to actually go get the items. So I just grabbed that shulker box and then use that. So we're just waiting on that one to fill up again. And that'll be the one we use for next episode, of course. But it's definitely looking a lot more Mars-like. And you can tell we got a pretty good distance. So of course that's mostly like there. So if we had just filled in, honestly, that little bit there, I mean, it would be all red. So like this little square here would basically make the whole front be quote unquote complete. But of course, that'll have to wait till next episode. So guys, now we are going to move on to what I actually wanted to accomplish this episode. And that is we're going to work on the giant hole. Now, I do have to dig a bit more. And of course, you know, I can go ahead and do that myself. So what we're actually going to do is, if I can remember where the entrance is, is over here. <laughs> what we're actually going to do is this wall over here is going to be all sugar cane. And so we are currently at level 89, right? And I said last episode, if we continue this down to like 29, that gives us like 60. And then, you know, if we go down to 20, that gives us 69, blah, blah, blah. So what I think I'm actually going to do is continue this down another 15 blocks and we're just going to go to 20 because that'll make this 69 high and the reason i'm kind of doing such an odd number is i of course want to put a mob spawner in the middle of this room and that might be a bad thing it might be a good thing i don't know we're gonna try it but i want to put a mob spawner in the middle of the room and then under the mob spawner i need enough room to put an iron golem farm and trading hall so you know i'm gonna need a decent amount of blocks and i don't want to make the middle like look too weird so of course, if we're on level 20, that still leaves us 80 blocks to go downward even more. And then we can go ahead and put our storage system and, of course, all that good stuff in there. But for this farm and the design I'm going to build, which is actually... I mean, I'm not looking at anybody's design. I'm just going to build it. So, I mean, I guess I could say it's my design now. But we're going to need a ton of observers and we are going to need a lot. And I mean a lot of pistons. Now, D told me over in the old shopping district, he actually does sell observers and pistons. But what I want to do is I'm going to go get some of those from there. And then I also want to go try out the new Hoglin trading farm, which somebody, I believe it was Freb, finally started. So let's go check that out real quick. So we've gone ahead and made it over to the Hoglin trading farm. And it is directly across from the shopping district portal. And then my portal is only right there. And that's D's portal. And the nether hyperloop is right here. So Freb actually said that he made some progress. 
and he actually did. So this side of the nether hyperloop is completely done. So really, I mean, if you guys think about it, there's probably only like five or 10 minutes worth of work left in this thing. So that's pretty cool. But I want to go ahead and of course use this trading farm to get ourselves just regular quartz. And I also want to get soul speed three. I currently have soul speed two and it's kind of just been sitting in my ender chest forever. So we're just going to go ahead and convert all of our gold blocks over. Now I do believe this here is the system. Now I believe you have to independently click the button each and every time. Oh yes. And it turns out you can actually just hold left click. So this is going to make my life a lot easier, but we're going to go ahead and trade through with this hoglin and see how many stacks of quartz we get. So I guess the one benefit to using this type of farm is you get a ton of items. So we actually got four stacks of gravel, about four stacks of blackstone. And then I remembered you get obsidian and soul sand. So this is basically everything you need for withers and beacons. And I've been having to go out and mine it. So I should have set one of these up a lot earlier. I don't know why I didn't. And of course, we got soul speed three. So that will actually fully max out our boots. And I actually have a spare book if anybody on the server would like one. And then this is soul speed two. Now, like I said, I might have another one. So might have a couple extra soul speed books. But guys, now I got, ah, I picked up all those bottles. Now I got to fly because there's no mine carts down here, but <laughs> we actually have to go back to the old shopping district and we are going to give Deesky a donation of diamonds. I'm going to go ahead and buy a few pistons and of course, a few observers. Now we did actually end up getting 60 quarts, so that's more than enough observers, but I'm a nice guy and I like to help people out. So let's go do a little bit of shopping. Shopping song, shopping song, gonna sing my shopping song. So we're here in Deesky's shop and he does appear two diamonds for eight? What? Okay, well, how many pistons? Two di- what? What? One diamond for- what is, what is the- what is this? That's a gift. D, you have a gift over here. Two diamonds for eight? Oh my god gosh well i need a lot more pistons than i do observers so i guess we'll buy 24 observers and pistons one diamond for eight okay well there's only four so i guess i'll do this all right well i'm gonna go cry a little bit because that wow i'm just gonna go cry wow Inflation. I tell you guys, it's rampant on the server. Well, it turns out I cannot put soul speed on my boots. Huh. So it turns out I'm probably going to have to remake my boots because for some reason soul speed 3 is too expensive. Well... That kind of puts a cog in the plans for today, but oh well, we'll keep on moving forward. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and clear out, of course, that area we were talking about down below and get that down to level 20, because I think that's a reasonable enough size for a sugarcane farm. 69 blocks, and I think it's 30 blocks across, is it? Let's count here real quick. 67, 18, and then if we come over here, we have 66, 80, so what is that? 10, 20, 30, 34. So that's 34 blocks wide and 69 blocks high. Yeah, that'll be enough sugar cane. All right, guys. So we went ahead and, of course, we managed to clear out enough space to start our sugar cane farm. So this is the area we're working with. And if you guys actually end up looking up here, we did, in between clips, start filming the Minecraft Mining Podcast with special guest I am Fluffy 90 this week. So we got basically this whole section torn down to here. So we did get a decent amount of work done. And then, of course, I went ahead and lit up the place, minus a few areas, as you can tell. <laughs> but <laughs> here is our general hole for our sugarcane farm. Now, the design I'm going to use is a very, very old design. And it's a design I've used for quite a while. It kind of, I mean, it's kind of foolproof throughout the years. It, it's, you know, withstood the test of time, I guess you could say it. But what we're going to do is we're going to come in three blocks here and three blocks from here. So I'm going to start the farm right here, okay? 
And the reason I'm doing that is because we're going to have a farm over here, of course. So this is kind of going to be dead space in here. And I mean, there's nothing I can really do about it because you got to manage to fit all the redstone and everything behind in a farm. But if we come right here, so one, two, three, and then one, two, three, this should be enough space to put our farm. Actually, it would be right here. But all right, so we're right here, and this is like the very, very front of our farm. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and basically I'm just going to make this into like cells of like seven. It's probably going to be a tad bit off because of like the measurements, like a tad bit different. So if I just come over here real quick and we'll try and get this measurement in. So we go one, two, three, and then one, two, three. So we go one, two, three, pop that torch out four, five, six, seven. And then we're kind of left with this space here. Obviously, we're going to have to like skip a space every now and again. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got some block lag there, so that made that a little bit harder. And then if we come over here, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. So, all right, so we got four cells of seven and one of six, which, like I said, isn't that big of a deal. I mean, it's going to be off centered, but it doesn't really matter because it's not meant to look good. It's meant to get us a ton of items. So, we have 7 times 3 is 21 plus 6 is 27 per row. So I'm going to try and build this as efficiently as possible. Now, does that necessarily mean it's going to happen? No. But <laughs> if we try and do this as efficiently as possible with 69 layers, of course, we are going to get a ton of sugar cane. So what I'm doing now is going ahead and putting the stairs in behind here. And these stairs are so we can waterlog them. And it will technically... Right now, it won't save us any space, but as we get up higher, it'll go ahead and like alleviate having to put a block underneath of a block. So we'll actually end up saving a spot here and there. Now I'm going to go ahead and make myself an infinite water source like so. And now we begin the fun process of, of course, filling all this in. Now I'm just going to use cobblestone in between here because A, you're not going to see it. We're probably going to put something over top of the farm, like a design or something like that. And then, of course, we have to put glass because this design I'm using doesn't collect the items individually on every floor. What it's going to do is collect the items down at the bottom. So now we just got to go ahead and waterlog all of this. Now, this is actually the time-consuming part of the process because if I was using just an open area where the water could flow, I'd only have to use like four three or four buckets of water as opposed to now I have to use seven. But like I said, it'll save us space in the long run. So a little extra work now makes it worthwhile at the end. And of course we got our little buddies, the slime spawning over there. Not to worry because they are tiny and I'll just punch them in the face. All right. So of course I went ahead and I got all the water in and then I just put these boards or, you know, oak planks behind it. So I'm going to go ahead and put our row of pistons in here. So we're going to have seven pistons. And then what we're actually going to have is six pistons. So we are going to lose some slight efficiency in this farm. But that is not that big of a deal. Because like I said, we're going to have so many that losing a little bit of efficiency isn't worth worrying about. So we'll just go ahead and I'll continue to place that one in the wrong spot. But we just do all this. And then I'm going to grab this. And what we're actually going to do is in this spot over here is fall in a hole and after we fall in a hole we're going to come back and place an observer right here so i have about 29 observers do i think this will be enough no but it's a good start so of course that's the wrong way because i always put those the wrong way so we'll go ahead flip around and come back here and bam all right so our observer is now facing in so whenever our sugar cane grows up to three tall, it'll fire all these pistons. So what I need to do is, of course, take a redstone signal out of this and then take it back here and power all these pistons. So I need to grab some slabs and get a little space here. All right, so I have myself now a working sugarcane design farm. It took me a couple seconds to get the redstone right, but I got it working. So basically, like I said, this observer will sense when this plant hits three tall and then if we come back here it will power this block it will power that piston and then the redstone line comes down here powering both sets of these pistons so we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at this in action hopefully you guys will be able to see it so if i do that you can see all the pistons fire and of course it does push it out here now the problem that creates is like sometimes they'll land on here and you'll lose some but like i said i'm not going for a highly efficient farm because we're going for numbers here rather than 
efficiency. Now, the one thing I did find out doing this is I can actually compact this redstone down to one wide behind the machine. So what I'm going to do is actually slide all these back one. Now, it's kind of going to sound like meaningless because all it's going to do is allow the farms on the side to be one block, of course, further over. So we're only going to add one, but it's going to make this area more open and I'll have, you know, two more blocks in the middle of the room, which, you know, come when we add the trading hall and the iron farm and all that down here, it's going to come in handy, that extra space. So... I'm actually going to go ahead and slide all this back. I'm going to repeat this design. I don't know how tall is it? One, two, three, four. So it's four tall. It's divided into 69 is 15, something like that, 16. So I'm going to repeat this design 16 times up and 16 times up and 16 times up. And now you guys see why we are going to get a large number of sugarcane. So let me go ahead and I'm just going to do that until I run out of resources. We'll see how far we get. And uh, yeah, we're going to have a massive sugarcane farm. And of course, we are going to need to smelt glass. Of course, a ton of glass to put like a wall of glass so, you know, the sugarcane doesn't go flying. But we can do that later because I don't feel like mining a thousand billion T million T glass. Well, guys, we went ahead and we got our design in. So... This took me about four hours and it's halfway done. <laughs> so this is what 69 layers of sugarcane farm look like. So, I mean, it goes all the way up there. I think it's actually only 66 because it stops a few blocks short. Now we do have like a rudimentary item collection system down here. This isn't the full item collection system. I'm kind of just doing this for now where I just like grab it and toss it in here. Now what we are going to do is actually line this with glass, of course, and then, you know, it won't like fly out like it is. But just from working on the farm, I started with basically having zero, like I was having to bone mill the sugar cane as it was growing. I have almost three stacks. So this farm is incredibly efficient. Now the thing is like right now there's some loss like here. And these are just like little design things. So it's not the end of the world if I lose a couple here and there. And of course my AFK spot is going to be about halfway up this farm because I'm not going to AFK down here because we're going to have a mob farm in the middle of this area. So we're probably going to be AFKing like somewhere around say, let's just say this level, just, just to, you know, put it out there. But we're going to be somewhere around here AFKing. So we will be able to see the whole entire farm and it all working. Now, like I said, in between episodes, I am going to have to do, well, a lot of work. Uh, we do have the Minecraft Mining Podcast, so I'm actually going to finish off the next section so we can start our next project. But when we come back, we'll actually start with this again. And we'll go ahead and finish this up. Get, of course, all the deep slate and everything in there and glass it off. So, of course, I'm going to have to go mine a ton of sand. But next episode, guys, I'm going to go ahead and try and get this clear, like I said. And we will try and get a melon and pumpkin farm on this side because I need a way to trade and I don't have a melon or pumpkin farm. I actually don't have any sustainable food source farms on my base currently. So we kind of need to make one so we can eat melons. They're a pain, but hey, it's better than nothing. So we'll just go ahead and put a pumpkin and melon farm the whole length of this wall. And of course, 69 blocks up. So we got a lot of work in store for this. And of course, we still have to finish the base, but I'm enjoying every second of this, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. So if you guys happen to enjoy today's episode, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you leave a comment. And as always, make sure you subscribe. And also, check out all the other Forever Bedrock members. A lot of them have started streaming a lot more often. And actually, as of recording this, it's a live stream weekend, and the majority of the server is live streaming. So make sure you check them out, guys. Links are below. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.